Welcome back, friends, to the shop on this very cold and rainy day. Good grief. It's been raining and snowing and sleeting for five days straight. I haven't been able to get back to the tiny forest. But one thing I have got accomplished is a whole bunch of honeydew lists or honeydews for Mrs. W. Got her garage at least one spot carved out of the chaos where she can pour her, pull her forerunner in. So that brings me to the shop. The shop. It's getting me down, man. It's just deplorable, the condition. It's starting to be a catch-all. I'm, I'm getting myself squeezed into the little tiny corner here where I can do my work, and there's just junk everywhere. You know how it is when you move. You know, we were kind of down to the wire on that last little bit, so things get dumped in bags, and the disorganization is, well, it's keeping me up at night. So we're going to get after that today. So my leader's intent, those of you who have went through leadership courses and stuff, you know, leaders intend. It's clear, it's important to speak to your folks that are under your command, what exactly that they need to accomplish that day so that everyone's on the same page, right? So my leader's intent to myself today is to start categorizing this massive pile over here. It is daunting indeed. So the problem that I'm running into, as we all know, is the old homestead I had three shops, a 40 by 60, a 35 by 35, and a 40 by 70. And all of that stuff has had to come into this one shop, which is 40 by 40. Now, I was hoping to take advantage of Mrs. W's garage. Uh, that seems to be not happening. She seems to be taking that up all on her own. So we got to make some hard decisions here and get some organizations. Now, fortunately, we have the Connex boxes that will get us through. The problem is, is we're in the middle of winter, so none of this stuff can go outside or it's just going to get destroyed. And I've got to do maintenance on some of the quads and generators, and I've got stuff all on the floor, and i just got no room for it. So we're going to have to, we'll have to be smart about this and um, get it working until the spring where we can do the addition, uh, get a little bit more space, uh, and get things sorted out. So let me show you what I've done. I've added to the uh, north wall a little bit, um, just to the next of the, of the tactical wall. Uh, I'll show you what I did with that, and then we'll get started on this. The, today's goal is going to be just to get everything cleared out and, and, and kind of in piles uh, so that it, we know where to go. So the evolution of the ch shop is actually, it's changing a little bit. You know, I said I didn't really need any more hobbies. Apparently uh, I, I do. So we have a new hobby. <laughs> we have, uh, Jack and I are going to be getting into snow biking. Now, if you don't know what that is, um, as you guys know, um, one thing that's been really great for Jack and I is that, you know, we don't have the same interests. As I've said in past videos, he's a little bit more like his mother. He's a little bit more intellectual and bookish. He's not really interested in tools and hands-on and the sort of thing that I am, which is fine. You know, I don't expect, he's his own person. I don't expect him to be uh, me. But, so I can make a choice. I can, we can not do things together or not share interests. So, or we can find things that we, we have in common with each other. Well, one thing that we've really enjoyed doing together is, is dirt biking. The problem with dirt biking is that can only happen about half the year here because we live in a true four season place, right? So enter the snow bikes. Snow bikes, if you don't know, I'm gonna attach a picture here. Now this is not my snow bike, but this is, um, this is very almost identical to what I'll be building and it should the, the bike is coming in the bike is a 2020 KTM 450 uh, it's a motocross bike so it's the lightweight stripped down bike and we're going to be putting a Yeti 129 on there uh, with the full build so that's going to be done in about three weeks and then we're looking to get Jack set up with the one as well so that we have something that we can do together uh, that I really hadn't planned on it when I was initially laying out the shop so now we got to kind of carve out an area where we can have an area to work on these things because as you guys know that ride bikes, there's a lot of maintenance involved with these and, and the, when you are going out into the back country, you want to make sure that everything's squared away. So there's oils and you know, all that sort of thing. So we're, we're not doing that today, but we're going to have to start planning for that and carve out a little spot, which is going to kind of be what we're doing today here. So let's start going through our stuff together. If you have a shop that's in chaos like I do, Now's a good time. Take your laptop, your, your uh, computer out, out in the shop, and uh, we can, well, misery loves company, right? We can all uh, get started together. So let's start wading through it and uh, see where it takes us in today's video. I've got you zoomed back out to kind of see what we've got going on so far. So I'd say the shop is about 20% done right there. So we've got, of course, the wood shop area. That's 
pretty much 100% done. We've got the, you know, all the cabinets for all the kind of the tactical gear and stuff and the fiddle bench right there. One thing that I've added that I haven't shown you, which we'll go over next, is about a little six foot spot I carved out for my photography equipment or the stuff that I use that supports me in making my videos. That's, there's a lot of batteries, there's a lot of audio equipment, uh, just having all that stuff. It's so complex and there's so many moving parts. What I, I don't have any help to, to make these videos and I, I try to make them really high quality and that means lighting, that means audio, that means video. There's so much going on, not to mention trying to think about you know, what I wanna share as far as content. So I've gotta be very organized or I make mistakes. Yesterday's video, for example, when I was shooting the, um, uh, the winter survival kit, I had sat down and shot the 20 minute video and went over everything. And because I had some, some other things on my mind, I'd forgot to put the batteries in the audio and I had no audio, I had to reshoot it twice. So that sort of thing, just I just can't do it. I just don't have the time for it. So I've gotta be super organized. So let's go look at that and then we'll look at the compressor. So here we are on the north wall. And as you can see, I use some of the louvers that Securit sent me with the shelving uh, to, to kind of manage my video equipment right here. So these are things that I use pretty much on a daily basis, uh, lenses and extra cameras and such, and, and a lot of audio equipment uh, and different things. And those. Uh, louvers really work nice because everything's where I can see it uh, and it's close to the door, you know, it's right by the electrical panel. So as soon as I walk in, usually, you know, I'm putting the mics on and, and getting the cameras ready and choosing, you know, lenses and cameras and such like that. And I put a few acrobins up and just the things that I use every day. I got a real mess of wiring there. I'm going to have to work out a better way for cable management to keep batteries charged because I have to charge so many batteries all the time. And then I just got one of the old benches from the old shop and my... Uh, Pelican boxes and overflow and that sort of thing down below. So that's working out pretty good. We'll have to clean up that cable, man, manage those cables a little bit better, but uh, that's all right. It's a, it's a good start and it's working out pretty good. Regarding the compressor, so complete change of plans with the compressor. Now, originally, I built out this little wall right here to have some hidden storage on the back. So we had a nice clean wall for, for what we could film up against and, and, and basically kind of have the blacksmithing area right here. And this was kind of, I changed it kind of from you guys' recommendations. And, you know, sometimes I don't think things through. I always tell myself, you know, hope is not a plan, but uh, I'm always hoping. The problem I, I had was I thought, well, it'd be nice to put the compressor back there, right? Behind that wall, it'd quiet it down a little bit and get it out of sight. But I didn't hold the wall out far enough. And what you guys pointed out to me was, hey, dude, when that pressure tank goes out, you're gonna have a heck of a time getting that out of there because there's not enough room to get it by the compressor, which was sitting right there next to it. And I've been stewing on that for a couple weeks and I'm finally like, yeah, you're right. You know, that's gonna be a problem. Hope is not a plan. That will go out and I'm really gonna be cursing myself when I have to try to figure out how to lift that big heavy pressure tank up over top of my air compressor. Plus, you know, the air compressor, it's something that needs maintenance. I like to keep an eye on it, right? And I need access to the regulator and stuff. And then having it so far from the electrical panel was, you know, hundreds of dollars of, of the heavy wire and stuff. And I, so I just completely changed my mind. I'm not gonna do that anymore. We're gonna have storage back there, but we're gonna leave that open. So if we need to get that pressure tank out, we can. So I'll show you where we're gonna put the compressor now. For the compressor location, instead of over there, we are going over right here, right by the door. That gives us, that puts us pretty close to the electrical panel. Get you sorted out here. Close to the electrical panel, and a short run of wire and that way I can run, we're gonna do, I'll, and I'll share this with you, we're gonna do the, a, a really nice air hose system so that we have air drops or chucks on, on accessing several points in the shop. So this is more of a central location, we'll be able to run those air lines out, have a chuck by the door, which is always really handy. You wanna have that by the door uh, that, so that when you're airing up a lawnmower or someone needs to put air in a tire, you don't want to have to come in the shop. You want something that you can push uh, or connect to on the outside. So we'll, we'll do all that in the future. I'm planning that right now. But that's where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it right there, as well as the supply cabinet, which is where I have all my abrasives, um, all of those, you know, Teflon tape, um, sanding discs, all those sorts of things, uh, uh, earplugs, uh, protective equipment, safety goggles, you know, respirators, all that stuff. I like to keep in that cabinet and I'll keep those together. So. I don't have it installed yet, but I'm kind of feeling that, but I think that's what we're gonna do with that. We'll put it right there and uh, we'll just go with that. And that pretty much leaves us to the, the west wall. I was gonna go through everything with you guys and uh, what we're saving, what we're giving out, but it, that's gonna be boring. So I'll, I'll, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave you guys with this. 
I'm going to tackle this off camera and I'll show you what the end, end result was. So sorry about that. Uh, but we'll, uh, I, I just, it's, it's not going to be very interesting. So a couple things before we close. So I talked to Mrs. W. Uh, a lot of you guys were asking if, if you could take a look at Mrs. W's pantry on, uh, you know, preparing. I, I was going to call it, uh, we'll do a vi video on it. We'll call it uh, uh, the COVID pantry or something like that. You know, what, what, uh, what we're doing. And again, we're not, just because what we're doing is not what you should be doing. It's just maybe some ideas and we're learning together, right? So I asked Mrs. W if she would be willing to share that this morning and she was uh, horrified because her pantry is about the same condition as my shop here. So she's got the last final things. She's got um, uh, some organization systems and stuff that are coming in Monday. And she asked, can we do it on Monday uh, instead? So we'll do that. So I, I told her, you got me on Monday. Uh, you and I will jump in there together. We'll uh, work shoulder to shoulder and get that done. And we'll video all that uh, so that uh, you guys can get some ideas and uh, we can kind of be on the same page. So there is that. Uh, what else is coming up? So regarding politics uh, and the COVID thing, you know, I, I found myself and you, you guys probably picked up on it because I think a lot of you guys feel the same way you know, really kind of getting depressed about what's going on and, and, um, and the election fraud and, and all of this stuff. And, you know, I, I, for a week there, so I was just kind of getting, I was really kind of getting depressed and down about it that I just, it just seemed so hopeless. And, and I sat down and, you know, and I kind of thought about it this week. I'm like, I don't want to live this way. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to be so angry all the time and so disgusted with people that you know don't see things the way that I do and and then you you get on the press and and you know we kind of pick the press that 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 agrees with our political views and and that stokes the flame and I found myself in a constant state of just anxiety and frustration and, and anger and hopelessness you know what I've decided, guys, is that I'm not watching any more. I'm not watching any more of that stuff. I'm, I have a few guys on YouTube that I watch it. I'll, I'll let them that kind of st distill it down, and that where I think you know you get some good news from. But I'm not watching any mainstream stuff. And I just, you know what, I'm at the point now with it that I just don't care. I it, I just don't care. I, I it's starting to look like to me it doesn't make any difference who who's in office. You know, what I mean, I, I, are we gonna? beat our head against a wall and are we going to uh, get so wrapped up in what's going on in a faraway place, Washington, D.C., about things that we have zero control over that are making our lives just, they're, they're, they're dragging us down. They're, they're taking away our peace. They're taking away our joy, getting involved with things that just we have no power over whatsoever. You know, I, once I kind of realized that, you know, and I was, I, I was getting, I would get annoyed with, with even people that we know, friends and neighbors, because they would show up and, and they were wearing masks. And I was just thinking, oh, come on, man. You know, and it's like, it, it's just, so, I, was, I, I was getting so angry about it that I was starting to be angry at them. And, I, and I, it just kind of dawned on me these last couple days and I think God's kind of been speaking to me and, and, and helping me to have some peace over this. You know what? If Don't worry about it. You know what? Do what you think is... what people, people are just people. They're not trying to offend me. They're not trying to offend you. They're reacting and they're acting to the best of their ability. They're doing what they, what they think is best to protect themselves and to, to protect their families. And how can you fault a guy that's, that, that does that? So if your neighbors or friends don't agree with you or, or they're taking things more seriously than you are, you know, I guess what we all need to do is we need to show some grace and, and show them some respect by, I guess, respecting their opinions. We may not agree with it. We may think that it's overkill or silly, but I guarantee you there's some things that we do, especially those that are, those of us who are big Second Amendment guys, that uh, other people think we're unhinged too and that we're going completely bonkers on the other way. So it's, it's, you know, we're not the center of the universe, right? So what I kind of decided to do is, is I'm not paying any attention to those guys in Washington. <laughs> I'm going to see to my family. Um, I'm going to really get involved with my community. I'm going to respect my neighbors. I'm going to respect my friends for their op opinions. I'm going to try to show them grace, and I hope that they will show me the same grace, and I'm going to get on with living my life. I'm going to build a couple snow bikes. I'm going to go out, and I'm going to spend time with my son, 
Um, I'm going to turn off the news in the evening. I'm going to turn off the router in the evening. I'm going to get more involved with my family, uh, reading, and just stop focusing on that stuff, man. I'm really at the point now, I was so wrapped up and so involved with, with the election and who's going to win and who, who's not going to win. You know what? Of course I have my opinions. Of course I had, have my, my desires. But I can't do anything about it. I cast my vote. My wife cast her vote. It's done. It's out of our hands. So why are we going to let it ruin our lives any longer? I'm done with it. So let's hunker down. Let's stay connected on this channel. Let's uh, learn from one another. Let's lift one another up. Let's uh, support one another. There's going to be high times. There's going to be low times. There's going to be folks that are losing jobs. There's going to be folks that are losing homes and having to move. And there's all sorts of things. But you know what? Ten years from now, things are going to be completely different. And hopefully they'll be better. But it doesn't matter. Remember, because those of us who are, are Christians know, and I need to remind myself of this, is that this has never been my home, and this is not the end. This is a, a temporary land that I need to journey through to get. It's a destination. It's going to be a, a hard trip. It's going to be filled with sorrow and misery and difficulties, but also it's going to be filled with joys and pleasures and, and wonderful memories and, and our families and our children and uh, to heck with those guys from Washington. Let them swim in their swamp, um, and I, I'm done letting it affect my, my family and my house, so I just don't care. What I care about is my subscribers. I care about you guys. I care about my family. I care about this community, and uh, let's just uh, put our heads down and uh, fight the good fight and just put one step in front of another and uh, just keep marching forward. So thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you guys on the next video.